If you are a white American or European or Asian, then you should know that there is a 100% probability that Neanderthal blood flows in your veins. More than that, there is also a chance that part of your physical, psychological, social, and physiological traits are not yours and purely human, but were inherited from Neanderthals. But do not panic because in this episode, we will explain how it is possible that people possess traits that come from Neanderthal origin, what these traits are, and how they can be seen in our daily life. We've designed this channel to regularly publish videos about the most important questions for humanity. So subscribe to our channel, and if you do not want to miss any important videos, click the bell button. The Neanderthals were a type of people who lived between 400,000 and 40,000 BC in the territory of Europe and Asia. The first skull of a Neanderthal was discovered in Belgium in 1829, and it was named after the Neander Valley in Germany, where the third skull of a Neanderthal was discovered. Initially, scientists believed that the Neanderthal were not humans, but an intermediary link between apes and men, and for this reason, some were calling them homo stupidus, meaning stupid man, which later on proved to be wrong. The Neanderthals made different kinds of tools, had medical knowledge, and maybe also religious ideas. And the size of their brain was even bigger than that of people today. So the big brain of a Neanderthal had a volume of 1600 cubic centimeters, while our human brain only has 1400 cubic centimeters. The Neanderthals had 35% more muscle mass than people today and reached sexual maturity at the age of 9, while their average lifespan was less than 23 years. This means that if the Neanderthals had lived today, they would have died exactly after graduating college. This is not funny at all. <laughs> Scientists have determined that the common ancestor of humans and the Neanderthals lived 700,000 years ago. And until the Neanderthals disappeared 40,000 years ago, they interbred with humans three times. First time with the ancestors of all non-Africans second time with the ancestors of Europeans and Asians, and the third time with the ancestors of East Asians. The result of these interbreedings was that 20% of the total genetic code of the Neanderthals has been preserved in humans until today. And as shown by a study from 2016, every person carries in themselves 2-3% to of the Neanderthal genetic code. In other words, all people except Africans are not pure sapiens, but carry in them 2-3% of Neanderthal blood. And in the past, this percentage was even higher. For example, Utsi, the Iceman who lived 5,300 years ago and whose mummy has been excellently preserved, was 5.5% Neanderthal. Although the Neanderthals died 40,000 years ago because of climate, disease, and wars with people, they continue to live in almost every one of us. Now, let us see what traits we have inherited from the Neanderthals. So, the BNC2 gene responsible for the fair color of the skin makes people more sensitive to UV rays, which causes skin burns. In turn, these burns can cause actinic keratosis, which is a precancerous condition. Also, skin burns cause seborrheic keratosis, which in itself is not dangerous, but damages the aesthetics of the skin. Although the gene that causes keratitis has a negative impact on skin, in the past it used to have positive effects. This is because people of old ages and the Neanderthals lived in little sunlight, and this gene favored vitamin D synthesis, and in this way protected their children from developing rickets. Another set of genes inherited from the Neanderthals is related to immunity, and it made people more resistant to infections, contagious diseases, and stomach ulcers. At the same time, the same genes made us more prone to allergies. Although, if you are allergic to peanut butter, you have bigger chances of not getting fat. Variations in ASB1 and EXOC6 genes make people prefer to go to bed later and sleep in the afternoon. These genes represented a beneficial adaptation of the Neanderthals to northern latitudes, where during wintertime, days are short and nights are very long. So, if your boss caught you sleeping at work, you can try and blame your Neanderthal genes. Two other genes influence our mood and degree of addiction. The gene CDH6 makes people more depressed, indifferent, and inclined towards loneliness, while SLC6A11 increases addiction and can make people become smokers. In other words, if you possess this Neanderthal gene, the probability that you will become a smoker is very big. And if you are already a smoker, then this may be due to the Neanderthal genes. Mutation in the SELP gene increases the tendency of blood clot formation. A bad thing nowadays, but definitely a good thing in the past, because better blood coagulation stopped bleeding faster and prevented infections.
increasing the rate of survival and lifespan. Since in order to get food, Neanderthals had to fight with wild beasts. Nowadays, the negative effect of this gene is seen also in the fact that it raises the risk of stroke, pulmonary embolism, and pregnancy complications. Another Neanderthal gene is responsible for the blue color of the eyes. And although not all people with blue eyes owe it to the Neanderthals, because this color has also evolved on its own in humans, still we can say that some people have blue eyes due to their Neanderthal ancestors. Regarding some other genes, it is known that they can increase the risk of many diseases, such as lupus, biliary cirrhosis, Crohn's disease, and type 2 diabetes. On the impact of some other genes of Neanderthal origin, not enough light has been shed yet, but it is known that they have an influence on the occurrence of psychiatric and neurological disorders, gastronomic preferences, schizophrenia, rheumatoid arthritis, and accumulation of fat. The issue is still under research. These would be the traits that we have inherited from our Neanderthal ancestors. Although nowadays a part of these features influences our life in a negative way, we should keep in mind that in the past they were useful for the Neanderthals and vital for their survival. Please do not panic if this information scares you. Scientists reassure us that although the influence of the Neanderthal heritage has quantifiable effects, it still represents a very small risk for us. If you have reached the end of this video, it means that you are interested in the science of genetics. So study this magnificent science starting with yourself. Do your own DNA test with Ancestry DNA, the best test of this type. It will help you learn not only who your ancestors were and where they lived, but also discover the roots of their migration and their daily life. Do not hesitate. 10 million people have already done this test. You will find the link to the DNA test in the description. Thank you for staying with us till the end. If you like this video, support us with a like, and for more great content, subscribe to our channel. See you soon.